Hello everybody, this is Bob Rich. It's um, Sweden's national day today. Hooray, hooray. And to celebrate, let's make a tab review video. That's completely unrelated sw uh, about Sweden or whatever, don't worry. Um, first tab here is uh, a new post from uh, Arabeskir or Tom Ryder as he's known as. Uh, who have this blog arabesque uh, with a lot of very cool uh, articles and he haven't uploaded anything in, in quite a while here if, if I press previous we can see the last post is, is um, almost uh, 18 months ago um, and that was uh, an article on Vimways uh, I guess we can look at that as well because that's kind of cool uh, but this article he wrote um, about passing runtime data to Orc, it's uh, more or less about uh, how to pass uh, uh, um, variables into an Orc script. And um, a lot of it uh, is stuff that I already knew about and have covered in, in my own videos and stuff, but there were some interesting things here that I didn't know about. So highly recommend this and always high quality uh, tips and tricks on this uh, blog. So. Really happy to see that he's uh, posting again. I hope he will continue. Uh, and you can find all kinds of stuff here. And if you dig around here a bit uh, in uh, Tom's archives, you might even find his uh, dot .files repo, which is probably the best dot .file repo out there. Whatever. Um, yeah, and Vimways here. That was like Vim had uh, this advent uh, calendar. Uh, I think they had it both 2018 and 2019 here. But it was kind of a anti-climatic uh, thing because uh, if I if I'm not uh, remember this uh, or as I remember it, they, they kind of missed a couple of days and stuff. So, uh, but but still very good articles both uh, both years here, 18 and 19. Uh, about some advanced uh, Vim usage uh, uh, things and stuff. It's uh, uh, yeah, very inspiring to read this, even for me who doesn't really use Vim. Um, good, good articles, uh, very <laughs> niche uh, text processing kind of stuff. Whatever. Next tab. Tristan Hume uh, have built a device. It looks like this. Uh, and here is a little camera. Uh, and this device also sends a key press and then uh, uses a camera to measure uh, the, the real time delay it takes uh, sending a key press to uh, a computer till uh, the, the character is printed on the screen. And you have made here uh, test, tests with this device uh, on uh, uh, tested different editors and also very interesting uh, different screens or different monitors and getting quite different results just uh, changing monitors. So uh, sometimes, you know, those things matter just as much as, as maybe even the text editor. It's also interesting to see uh, the difference between different text editors and terminals and, and stuff. Uh, the tests are, are all done on his uh, Mac, so yeah, I guess that's uh, worth considering. Uh, these uh, numbers would probably be different if we would run them on, on a uh, Linux machine. And of course it depends on, on all kinds of, of stuff, not just the keyboard and the screen and the editor. You also have the CPU and you get it. But uh, still, interesting, interesting stuff. and. Um, uh, also cool to see uh, like real measurements like this, not just some uh, bash script that times the time it takes to, to execute a command. This, this is what it's really about, you know, when, when you can see the change on the screen. So yeah, cool article, highly recommend. Uh, and there, I think there are some uh, short instructions on how to build one of these devices yourself. and. In one way I kind of want one, but uh, I know that I will never build one, but whatever. Next tab. Running Orc in parallel to process 256 million records. Uh, 
not 100% sure uh, who this guy is. Uh, maybe he's some, some kind of a student uh, or, or something, but apparently he have access to uh, this hardware here, which is kind of mind-blowing. Uh, large memory, 24 terabyte. Yeah, that's that's uh, large memory. I would I can agree with that. 512 core Intel Xeon <laughs> CPUs. Uh, so you have this hardware, uh, and then you had like uh, some some problems, some data challenges. Uh, like uh, find, I, I I think the challenges are like all published. Uh, um, scientific papers or something every single one of them uh, with every author and everything you know and he, he, he tries here to solve a, uh, a couple of puzzles or, or problems and he tries to use uh, like the unix stack or what to call it you know with, with uh, and especially awk to, to do this and these are uh, um, Problems that you typically uh, try to do uh, with a like SQL database stuff or whatever And he also interesting here. I never ha have never heard about this, but uh, he, he uses a scripting tool uh, It's uh, it kind of looks like bash or something like that uh, It's called Swift and it's not the Apple Swift that you can use to develop uh, Mac software kind of it's um, or Apple software, whatever. It's not that because this is more like a, a bash script kind of thing uh, that is used uh, in environments like this when you have access to, to like this insane uh, hardware, so you can fine tune and uh, multitask uh, different and send this different tasks uh, to different CPU cores and uh, using different threads or stuff like that. So it's like an uh, advanced version of GNU Parallel or something, whatever. Uh, but it's uh, just cool to read about this uh, crazy, crazy uh, uh, large data collections and stuff. And some of the problems I think takes uh, uh, almost one hour to solve. But most of them I think it writes takes uh, uh, less than a, uh, a minute. Here we have one that takes nine minutes. And it is something like 400 gigabyte of, of just JSON uh, text, you know containing all of this so it's uh, it's just fascinating and uh, there's also quite a lot of, of orc uh, code here so so that's all always fun to read right next tab hacker laws I just found this uh, 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 read me here uh, it's a collection of, of these uh, typical laws you know you have uh, the, the classic Moore's law here for example then there's a short description of what that is. Uh, the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. That's like the classic uh, IT law or whatever you know. But also Murphy's law. Uh, isn't that like chaos theory and uh, Jurassic Park? Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. Parkinson's law and wh whatever, the, just a collection and like a very short summarization of, of these laws in quotation mark and links to where you can read more about them. Uh, I, I think this is um, a good document to, to glimpse over to see if there, there is probably at least uh, one or two laws that you have never heard about, you know, and some of them we all know and love like the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, whatever. A nice little document. Cringe name, but whatever. Next tab. 10FF. Typing tests in CLI. In CLI, command line interface. Uh, a site, certain typing contest site spin-off. And uh, yeah, I think you can, maybe you can or maybe you can't figure out which certain typing contest site this is a spin-off of. Uh, but it is. Um, uh, but it's a terminal program written in Python. Uh, no JavaScript, no Ajax, no 10 megabytes of Ajax, no ads, just you and your terminal. And uh, it's very easy to install it here, cloning this repo. And uh, you, you don't even have to install it. You can run it like this, or you can use pip, or you can use AUR. And that is what I did. Uh, so yeah, I can just demo this uh, really shortly here. So if we do this. Change font size, clear the terminal, 
and then we can do 10 ff and then it pre uh, gives me here a list of words and i'm supposed to type this as fast as i can but it's kind of hard to do that now when i'm uh, recording this video and talking at the same time you know but you get the id it's very similar to that uh, um, contest uh, typing site that it is inspired by so i think this is a good uh, little program to have uh, and um, i like to do this uh, type just uh, do something like this and uh, maybe listen to a pod or something at the same time i can i can do this uh, uh, I just find it relaxing in a way and it's also good because it improves your typing uh, speed and accuracy but just as with uh, uh, the typing site that this program is inspired by it's it had this kind of really simple uh, I think it's the top 1000 or maybe it's top 200 most common words but you can change the word list um, type help here we can see that there is one command line option called uh, list for instance that will list all uh, different corpuses or word lists that you can use here and as you can see there are a lot of different languages like Swedish and uh, what is Slovenian and Chinese and all kinds of languages and many of them have this advanced uh, options and um, I kind of recommend if you're doing English for example use the English uh, corpus here and to, to set a specific corpus then you use uh, the C option I believe uh, yeah short option C or long option corpus and then just the name here for example Ukrainian that would give me a Ukrainian word list here so corpus Ukrainian there it is uh, a little bit slow, you know, to start and stuff, but I think it works fine. And, and the uh, experience when you type and see the words and stuff, I think that's really good. Man many of these uh, touch typing tutor programs, uh, they either have like annoying aesthetics or, or design choices. This is very just uh, typing, you know. So it's a recommendation. Um, I would maybe do so, some things different and I have actually thought about maybe try to port this uh, or port clone it in in uh, bash uh, just as a little fun project to do and then I would design it a little bit different maybe center the text and stuff it would ju just be cool to have, have one of these uh, yourself and it's released under the uh, excellent WTFPL license so I think I can do that if I want to but we'll see what happens Next tab. <laughs> I love this. Uh, Jan Wachol um, is a Polish DevOps music engraver, Git expert, uh, and he is also uh, like a syntax uh, high or what, what do we call this color scheme uh, enthusiast. Because you know, Solarized, uh, you can clearly see that this is uh, somehow related to, to Solarized. It's even called Zelenized. Uh, it's, it's like an improved uh, Solarized. After researching perceptually uniform color spaces, four years of testing, refining use, fine tuning lightness using professional grade CIE lab color space. The task of redesigning Venerable Solarize is almost finished. He, he isn't uh, uh, finished, but soon, very soon, he, he will make a, a full release of this. But you can, all the colors and, and, and the stuff is here. But I just find it amazingly beautiful that he have put so much work. And I, I actually believe he have done like four years of testing into this. Uh, improving Solarize. Um, and if you click uh, this this link here, he, he will describe what is problematic with the solarized color scheme. Confusing accent colors, and that's uh, what's described here. Uh, and it's a very good description, just these two uh, graphs here. But here we can see the solarized colors, and it's easy to see how similar they are, you know. 
uh, and it's very easy to mix these colors uh, uh, or confuse them. And if you depend on a multicolor highlighting for some reason, then this, this might actually be problematic. Uh, and this version, it still, it kind of follows the same color. I, I don't know, I don't understand uh, color theory and stuff, but it feels like he, he have really, really put some work into getting the perfect use here. Uh, and here we can clearly uh, make a distinction between green and yellow. Difficult here in Solarize. Yellow, orange. Those are not difficult, but orange and red are very similar here. Yeah, much better distribution of accent colors. But also much better uh, contrast between background and foreground uh, for normal text here. Here we can see this is Solarize, this image here. This isn't uh, his uh, uh, um, color scheme, this is actual Solarized. And just by looking at this, it, of course it's too small here to read. The, the text is impossible to read because it's too small. But you can see this weird effect that you get, and this is one of the biggest issues, in my opinion, with Solarized. This that if you are using Solarize, then you kind of have to, uh, then every other application you are running and your wallpaper and, and the, your actual wallpaper in your room, you know, have to match the Solarize color scheme. Otherwise, uh, it, it, it will cause this weird effect. And this Solarize uh, uh, document here, it's much harder to read that when you have a, a, a light colored window uh, next to it like this. If, if, if you would close this window, then this would be much easier or will become much easier to, to read. It's some weird uh, contrast uh, phenomena effect or whatever. I think he describes this a bit here. But here we can see his version, selenized here, slightly darker background, but uh, uh, a much higher contrast on foreground and background here makes it much easier to read. Here, these images are probably better representations of how, uh, how they actually read, you know, and it also kind of fits, works much better with uh, light uh, windows, other windows that are lighter. So you have put a lot of work into this, uh, really, and re researching color theory and whatever. And it is available in uh, four different variants here. I just want to show you those. Shortly here we have the default one, the light one, the black one, and the white one. So, kind of cool. But I don't think, if I will use this myself, I will probably use this or this. Because uh, to me, they are still too similar to Solarized. And Solarized, it, something has happened in my brain, so I, I cannot stand those colors. And this, to me, signal Solarized anyways. It's not about... <laughs> I don't know, uh, but it looks a, a lot better uh, in a very subtle way uh, than Solarize does. So this is really cool. Uh, I, I just find it fascinating and, and admire, uh, I admire the work and effort he have put into this and taking like uh, such a silly thing as uh, syntax highlighting and the color schemes so serious and that's beautiful. Um, I also found uh, when because I, I lurked his uh, uh, repositories a bit um, to see what this John Warchel uh, has been up to. And I found this repository also, uh, Limestone Colors, Minimalistic Syntax Highlighting with Great Readability and Thoughtful Design. Um, so this is a different color scheme, but uh, right now it, uh, it is paused because it's working on this selenized uh, to become stable, which uh, will happen soon here. Uh, but these colors are like, he, he have found the contrast values and the use and stuff for these colors while he was uh, uh, researching uh, how to redesign uh, Solarized. And he have some, some screenshots here on, on this limestone color scheme. And I, I just think it's, it's, uh, it's really, really nice. It's uh, much nicer than uh, Solarized and I think I will try this, uh, use it as my terminal uh, color scheme, even if it's dark. It's like I haven't seen a, a nice dark theme in so long, but th this looks really, really nice. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Swedish colors, you know, yellow and blue.
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah, ju just cool, cool stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I also saw that he this guy doesn't only do color schemes. He he actually does uh, contributions to to um, GNU Lily Pond, which is uh, like uh, uh, LaTeX, fa uh, but for music note sheets. But whatever. Those are the tabs I have in my browser today. And since it is Dan Svenska Flaggans dog, why not end this video with some good old Ultima Thule play. Have a great day everybody! Bye 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 bye!